All right, we rolling. Volume of prisms and cylinders. Nope. Um, before I start, I want to talk about help you switch your brain over. So we did surface area when we first started a 3D unit, lateral area and surface area. Surface area, that's just the area of all the faces of your figure. You need surface area for instances, like say if you're looking at this rectangular prism over here. If you wanted to wrap it, say it was a box and you wanted to wrap it like a gift, you would need to know surface area to do the wrapping to figure out how much wrap you would need to wrap around that box. Or if this was a if this was a cabinet or something, or a shelf or something, you wanted to paint it, you would need to know surface area for that. Now we're doing volume. Volume is space inside of something. Say you wanted to say this was a chest or something, or, and you wanted to put stuff in it, then you would need to know the volume of the figure. Or if it was a fish tank and you wanted to fill it up with water, you would need to know volume. Volume is the amount of space inside of a figure. You need to switch your brain over. We're not doing surface area anymore. This is volume. Since we're doing volume too, our answers will be in units cubed. It's three dimensions. All right, here we go. Uh, they give you a formula right here that you already should know. Volume equals length times width times height. <clears throat> if you already know that formula, that's good. If you don't, I kind of want you to use this formula for every prism or cylinder that you see. Volume equals capital B times height. <clears throat> Make sure you focus right now. I told you, this first five minutes is crucial. Childish stuff. Stop being children. Grow up a little bit. Let's be young adults. So volume equals capital B times the height. Capital B is the area of your base. Your base is, you, and we did that in, um, when we first started this unit. Y'all should all know how to identify the base of a figure. Depending on the shape of your base, that's what your capital B is going to be. It's going to change depending on your figure. For example, on this first one, they already called it by name, but what's the shape of the base on this figure? It's a rectangle, right? How do you find the area of a rectangle? Left times width, right? <clears throat> so in this formula right here, L and W is capital B. That's the area of my base right there. But depending on your shape, capital B changes. For example, down here for this shape, what's this shape that we got in the example here? Triangle of what? Prism. Shape of the base is a triangle. So your capital B in this case would not be length times width. What would your capital B be? What's the how you find area of a triangle? One half base times height. The B changes based on your figure. If we were to do a trapezoid, then your capital B would be the area formula for a trapezoid. You have to find the area of the base first and then times it by the height. The only additional piece we add in there for volume is really height. Because the other part, if you without that H right there, you're really just doing area of your uh figure, whatever figure you got. Take the area of your figure times it by the height, that's that third dimension right there. And then that's going to give you volume. Uh, just to have you a little reference point, I'm going to write them all over here for you. The different B's you'll see. So the first one, rectangular prism, I'm going to abbreviate. And let me zoom in. <clears throat> for a rectangular prism, capital B would be length times width. For a triangular prism, tri prism, your capital B would be one half base times height. For a trapezoidal prism, capital B would be one half height. Then base one plus base two. This is all stuff y'all already know. <clears throat> and then the last one that we need for today, cylinder. <clears throat> What's the shape of a base of a cylinder? So what you think I'm gonna use to find area of the base? Pi r squared. But all those stand for uh, the capital B and all of those is the different areas of your different bases. The reason I'm teaching it to you like this too. 
<clears throat> your reference sheet for your EOC. This is it right here. I've all, I always have them. I'm probably going to start giving them for you, to y'all for these last couple tests we take, just so you can start learning how to reference them. Only formulas they give you on there are the trig formulas and then these three volume formulas. And then the last two things are just slope stuff, which you really don't need. You should already know that anyway. But these three volumes, this is your whole reference sheet right here. This is it. It's all the formulas you're going to get. You ain't going to get no distance formulas. You ain't going to get Pythagorean theorem. You ain't going to get none of the area formulas. None of those will be there. They're going to assume you know that. This is why I'm teaching you capital B. Because this formula right here goes for rectangular prism, triangular prism, trapezoidal prism, and cylinders. This formula is for all those shapes. You, if you understand what a capital B means, though, you can understand how to change it to help you solve whatever problem you need to solve. Capital B is area of the base. Figure out the area of your base first and then times it by the height. <clears throat> All right. So the first two are just rectangular prisms. They want us to find the volume of each of the rectangular prisms. The first one, volume equals, and I'm going to write the original formula first, capital B times height, just so y'all can get used to seeing it and understand that we need to change it. For this one, volume equals, so our base on these are rectangles. So we need to change this to length times width times the height. And then put your numbers in. Your length and your width, 9 times 17. That will give you the area of the base times the height, which is 24. This will give you the full volume of the figure. I got you. 3,672. Centimeters cubed. Thank you, ma'am. To the third power. So, it shouldn't take y'all long at all to do a rectangle prism. If I see one of y'all sitting there staring at that for five minutes, I'm going to know you just whacked out. Something wrong with you. You know what? Now's the time to put on my glasses. CJ, let's not make a big deal about this. <clears throat> Guys, I bought prescription glasses because I need them for reading. I don't need everybody to make a big deal about this. You know what? We might need to pause the video for this. Let me give y'all a moment. What number does that say? Huh? Is it from zero? Eight? Okay. Hopefully it's okay. We'll find out. All right. Uh, number two. Same situation, volume equals capital B times height, volume equals L times W times H, 10 times 14 would be your area of your base, times your height, which is 4.5. I'll let y'all give me the number. Oh, my bad. That should be a three. This is inches. Cute. Oh. Yeah. I messed up. I messed this one all up. I didn't even box my V. My bad, y'all. 630 inches. Cute. All right, so rectangles should be easy. Triangles are the one I'm uh need y'all to focus in on. Shh. So this first one in the box here, this is a triangular prism. This one is turned on its basis. Sometimes they won't be turned on their basis, but for a prism, you should know that the bases have to. Well, let's let's talk about that. For a prism, your bases have to be what? We did this the other day. What should your bases be on a prism? Should be two things. Parallel. And congruent. All right, because some kids are having trouble identifying the bases down here, number three and four, when you shouldn't. <clears throat> All right. The other thing, I need to say something about this too before we go. So the H in the formula, once again, is the height of the actual uh, figure itself. And, and that height on a prism is going to be in between the bases. All right, so number three. 
you got a triangular prism. So start out with the volume formula. Volume equals capital B times height. And then volume equals, make the adjustment for capital B. Our base is what shape again? Triangle. So we should use the triangle formula for area. One half times base times height in parentheses times height. The reason I did this in parentheses because you got two H's and both of those H's do not mean the same thing. One, the first H in the parentheses is for the height of the actual triangle. The other H is for the height of your figure, your prism, which is yeah, the five. So you need to understand those H's are not the same thing. Now there may be coincidence every once in a while where those two numbers are exactly the same, but for the most part they won't be. And they won't be on this problem either. So those two H's are not the same. Don't you understand that? All right. So for our triangles, make sure we got all the stuff we need. And I'm going to ask this too because kids having issues with this still. When you're doing area of a triangle, your base and height should be what of each other? Nope. Perpendicular. <clears throat> Thank you, Robert. So based on that, Robert, what would my uh, base and my height for my triangle be? Hmm? You think those two numbers are perpendicular of each other? They, yeah, for my triangle. No, shh, sweetheart, you don't understand what perpendicular means. Yeah, listen, this 12 back here can move up to this front right here. There go your right angle right there showing you perpendicular lines. Hey, you just said the wrong thing and then you're looking off. Look up here. I'm teaching you, man. I'm trying to correct your mistakes. So you won't go through making life making the same ones. Perpendicular line right here. Indication is the right angle. These two pieces are perpendicular to each other. These are the two lengths I want. It's just that simple. That's all you got to identify. I don't know why y'all been struggling on that. So for the triangle, V equals one half times base, which is 12, times my height, which is 7.3, and then times the height of the actual figure, which is what? Five. five. The height of my figure is five. Calculate that. You should get my volume. Uh-uh. Something's off. No, no. I'm talking about... Yeah, that. I'm talking about... Oh. My bad. I didn't know what she was telling me. Next problem, very similar situation. Kimberly, I want you on this one. Newton. So volume equals capital B times height. Kim, this is a triangular prism, so it's going to be one half times B times H in parentheses times H on the outside. Let me zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> I'm asking Kim Newton. I want to know base first. I need that. One in order here. I'm talking to Kim Newton. Say it again. Base is 11. Height is 5.4. And then Kim, on the outside, what's the height of our actual figure? I'm asking Kim, not anyone else. Six. You're just going to guess numbers. I can't have that right now. What's the height of my figure? What's the height of my figure? Why y'all whispering now? Everybody scared? I said, I said I'm opening it up now. Sixteen. Jesus Christ. 
Yeah. No, it's not that. Shh. Let's talk about it because y'all can't see it. Y'all minds ain't seen it, right? Listen, up here says the height is between what? The bases. What are my bases on this figure? No, 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 no. No, no, no. The base is like, what's the shape of the bases? Triangles. The height is in between the triangles. Here, here, and here. You paying attention? Same thing on this one. That's why we got five. That's why we use five on this one. This is our height here. Look at it. These are just turned to their side. If you look at the one up here, they even showing you where the height is. You got two triangular bases. This is your height here. Y'all okay? We're going to be okay? And I, I should have said that on the first one, but if y'all notice, there's certain numbers on both of those we didn't use. Certain numbers you just don't need. I mean, it's good for them to be up there, but uh, we don't need them. Not to find volume. Why is the 16 the only one in um, that's a typo. You're the first person to say something about that. I guess everybody else just realized that was a typo. I mean, I realized it was a typo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Let's get it. Somebody say about doing it. Let's go. Uh, select the... Uh, it went, no, tell them what the shape is first. Trapezoidal prism. So your bases are what? Trapezoid. So let's write our formula out so make sure you have that. V equals capital B times H. We need to adjust that. V equals what? Mm -hmm. Times height. I'm going to have a lot of parentheses here, but. I need to gap stuff out. Times our height. Same thing with uh, as it was with the triangle. Those H's are not the same. The first H is for the height of your actual trapezoid. The second one is for the height of your actual figure, the prism. <laughs> All right. So let's make sure we got everything we need. We need height, base one, base two. I see base one. Base 2 is back here. I can move it up and put it right here, too, just to be on the same line, the same side of the figure. Uh, they gave us an altitude, so we're good for the trapezoid. <clears throat> then after that, we have the length of, uh, or the height of our actual figure, too. So, Selecty, we have everything. Put it in for me. V equals 1 half times what? 17.9 times what? Twenty-five. Remember. And I keep highlighting it for you so you see it. The height of your figure is going to be in between your two bases mm -hmm. for your prisms. Here, 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 here. This them. That's the height. That ain't what we get. They told me, I remember the last class, they told me 11,187. So. Yeah, that's what they told me. I don't know what you...
Yeah. Oh, so what some of y'all, make sure y'all do it in parentheses first. Maybe that's why some of y'all got thrown off. You got to do 14 plus 36 first. Then do the multiplication in there and then times by 25. Go in order. Make sure you see that number in the calculator. If not, we got issues. Miss Williams, six is for you. That don't offend me. It's an accident. Uh, number six. Uh, what shape is this? A triangular prism. All right. So your bases are what? Ain't no trick question. What is the shape of your bases? No, 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 no. What are the shape of your bases? Triangles. Okay, you got everything you need to find the area of the triangles? No. What you missing? Yeah. yeah. Let me show you what you're missing. So you got two triangles here. They're identical. You got a right angle up here. I can bring this 32.5 kilometers here, too, just to move it to that line. We are missing, and this is a right angle, too, so it's a right triangle. In a right triangle, you already perpendicular. Your horizontal right here, your vertical is here. We are missing our base. Nope. Yeah, thank you. What you need to do, Miss Williams? Everybody's trying to guess numbers. It ain't that easy. Uh. Every time. Uh, 32.5 is the what? Nope. No, I'm talking about in the Pythagorean. That's the C. I just want to make sure because y'all been writing them wrong. I've been seeing on y'all paper. Y'all been trying to figure out what the numbers are on. Make sure that goes on the side by itself. 28 squared plus B squared equals 32.5 squared. And then make the calculations. I'm going to cheat since I did it last period. 70, Square root, square root. Yeah, 16.5 is what you should get. Not a bad decimal at all. It's just one decimal place. It's better than the other stuff we've been getting. So 16.5 is my base. Nah, I got the stuff I need so I can um do the formula. See right. Came up. Wake him up. Man up, man. Thank you. Have base times height times the height, like you said. So put the numbers in now that you have them. V equals one half times 16.5 times the height, which is what? 28, good. Times the height of our actual figure. What is the height of our figure? 31. <laughs> Yep. Violent. Being violent. I can't curse, I have to win. 
Okay, go ahead and just hit. Alright. We should be good on that. Moving on. The last one I gotta show you is the cylinder. Cylinder's not hard either. Ignore this formula that they have down here. Shh. That is not gonna be on your reference sheet. You need to remember this capital B and know that you need to change it to this. <clears throat> so we start with capital B every time. Uh so for a cylinder, volume equals capital B times height. The shape of your base of your cylinder, everybody should know, is a circle. <clears throat> so to find area of a circle, that's where the power squared comes in at times the height. That's the adjustment that needs to be made, and then you just do it from there. This one shouldn't be hard at all. V equals 3.14 times our radius. What's our radius? Times the radius again times the height. 15. That's easy. Uh, 60.4. All right. Inches cubed. 60.4 inches cubed. Chair, you're gonna get caught on my tape. Second one, volume, same thing, equals capital B times height. Change it to fit the problem. Power squared times the height. Volume equals 3.14 times. Christian, what's our radius on number eight? Thank you. Times twenty-one. I heard you. They didn't really tell us around. Uh, All right. Last two, and the ones you're more likely to be asked on the test, the application ones. Number nine. It says a cylinder with a two centimeter diameter is drilled through a triangular prism shown on the left. Find the volume of the prism. So on the left here you have a triangular prism. They drilled a cylindrical hole through it. They want to know the volume of it with the hole in it. To do that, most of y'all should know that we're going to find the volume of the triangular prism. Then find the volume of the cylinder. And do what? Why would we add that together when we're drilling a hole through something? We should subtract because that hole is going to be the piece that's missing, right? Alrighty. Let's do that. <coughs> so, uh, before we, well, we got to do volume of a triangular prism first. But looking at this triangular prism, anything missing? A radius? Why do you need a radius on a triangular prism? <laughs> yes, you're missing the height of the triangle. We got to find that. I'm going to actually bring these numbers at the top down here. I'm going to bring five centimeters down and then five centimeters right here just so you can see it down here too with the other number. 
issue here is we're missing the height of the actual triangle. This triangle is isosceles, so our height is going to go directly down the middle of it. <clears throat> our altitude will be right here. Down the middle of the triangle. If that happens, it splits that triangle into two smaller congruent ones. Y'all should know all this. This ain't nothing new. <clears throat> and then to find that height, I can't use 7.1. What do I need to use? Do the math. Tell me what I need to use. Wrong. 3.55. Somebody said 0. .55. Thank you, that person. Everybody should know where I got 3.55 from. If not, we got issues. We've been doing this too long now. Only thing I need you to remember is when you get ready to do the uh, Pythagorean, where stuff goes. <clears throat> Five centimeters is uh, what in a triangle? Huh? It's the hypotenuse. Make sure that goes on the side by itself. You paying attention to Aquarius? No. So 3.55 squared plus b squared equals 5 squared. The 5 squared part is easy. The decimal that you get from 3.55 isn't that bad. Write the full thing out on paper. It's like 12.6025. Then you need to subtract that. What's this? Keep that decimal in your calculator. Square root, square root. I say in your calculator, you're going to get a long decimal. Keep that in your calculator. On paper, you probably don't want to write the whole thing down. Just put something after, I'm going to put a line after my reminding me that I got a long decimal in my calculator I need to keep. <coughs> That's the one in the calculator, right? Yeah. All right, hold on to that. <clears throat> then from there, now we know the height of our uh, triangle at the bottom. It's going to be 3.5, whatever that decimal is. Keep that in the calculator. And we're going to write our formula out. So we're doing triangular prism first. Triangular prism. Volume equals capital B times H. Make the adjustment. Volume equals one half times B times H times H. And then put your numbers in. One half times our base is going to be what? Make sure y'all get that right. Wrong. What? No. Somebody say the correct thing, please. How do we not know this in here? What is our base going to be? Lord have mercy. Oh, they whispering. I didn't hear that. Never heard that. A lot of people said 3.5. I heard the query say 3.5. And then our height is going to be that decimal we just found. 3.5 repeating whatever. Not repeating, but long decimal. Times the height of our actual figure, which is what? 14. So you already got that decimal in the calculator. So we're going to use it. So that decimal times 7.1. I do times 0.5. And then times 14. That's what I got. So, when you get that, uh, we didn't tell you how to round. We're just going to round to the hundreds. We ain't going to. 99, yeah. 
174.99. I'm going to use that number. And then that's not our answer yet because we still got to find the volume of that hole and cut it up. Yeah. So next we need to do the cylinder. For the cylinder, volume equals capital B times H. Volume equals power squared for the capital B times the H. Volume equals 3.14 times the Aquarius. What's our uh, radius? Oh, man. Y'all don't know. Thank you, Mick. The radius is 1 times 1. Yeah, I can. If you read the problem, the cylinder with a two centimeter diameter. <laughs> Times the height of the actual figure. Fourteen. You have reading issues. Forty three point ninety six. Alright, then after that, well, I ain't gonna do that yet until I get my actual answer. We're subtracting, it's a hole. So the volume is gonna be 174. Oh, that's supposed to be 70. 0.99. I wrote that number all wrong right there. That's 174, that's that number. 0.99 minus 43.96. Clark, you might have to heat up these pins again, man. Ink acting blotchy, man. I may need Harker to, uh, Parker to heat the pins up. Do all of these. They are all acting funny right now. I'm not getting paid for this. Getting paid in education. You're welcome. Alright, uh. Last one I need to do for you. Well, actually, not the last one. I'm helping you with your practice, too. Oh, nice me. <laughs> Number 10. I don't want to read this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just want to figure out how long it's going to take you to fill up this pool. They tell you how much water comes out the holes per hour. Uh, to make use of that, you need to find the volume of the pool first. The only thing you need to understand, though, you need to make adjustments. They told you, on the figure, they're showing you the height of the actual pool is 4.5 feet. But it makes sense. He only wants to fill up to a depth of 4 feet, because if you think about it, you fill the pool all the way to the top, then you put people in, water's just going to fill a spill out. Yes. So we're going to 4 feet. need to make that adjustment. All right, then we need to find the volume of the pool. Once we get that, we can uh, divide 80 into that to figure out how many hours it's going to take to fill up this pool if we're using a water hose. So volume equals capital B times H. Make the adjustment. This is a cylinder, so pi r squared times the height. Volume equals 3.14 times the radius, which is what? Say it one more time. Thank you. Times the height. There we are. point what? Zero six. This is feet. Yeah, so that's the volume of our pool. Then after that, we need to take that number divided by uh, the flow rate, which is 80 feet cubed per hour. 
Thank well, we're just going to the nearest hundred, sir. Thank you. So two eighty nine point zero six feet cube divided by eighty feet cube per hour. If you do that you'll get the hour. Which the query said was twenty eight point six one. We're gonna leave it as a decimal. I'm not about to convert that decimal to hours. We ain't got that kind of time on our hands. I mean, during that decimal of minutes. So almost 29 hours, or 20, 28 and a half hours. I did a test, they're all approved. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. Approved, Good gentleman and a scholar, sir. Why you, oh, who up? Yeah, one of y'all, Kims. Why one of y'all run practice run? You're You heard that. I'm about to show something on the next page. Can't let me get one. Hey, I'm about to help y'all start y'all practice, so. You be messing up when I pause it. I just need Ken to hurry up and get the papers out so I can get one. Give me one, Ken, so I can start. They can catch up when they get his papers. I don't know if we should waste one on George. I need a paper. Thank you. It's only certain ones I'm gonna help y'all with because I, I know I know y'all by now. I know where y'all gonna get stuck at or not try. So let me help you so you try. Where this came from? Ooh, real nice. Uh, the volume of a rectangular prism is 655.2 feet cubed. Robert, let me finish reading this first. If the base of a prism is 9 feet by 5.2 feet, find the height of the prism. Round to the nearest whole number if necessary. All you're doing is working backwards on this one. It's volume of a rectangular prism. They already give it to you. You just need to set the formula up, put the stuff in, and work backwards. Go ahead, Robert. Volume equals capital B times H. This is a rectangular prism, so volume equals length times width times height. <clears throat> and then from there, put what you have in. They give me my volume, 655.2 equals my length, which they told me was 9, times my width, which was 5.2, times the height which we need to find and then from there we multiply and work backwards 9 times 5.2 you can get that 46.8 thank you times H over here 655.2 and then you should know the only other thing you need to do is some people today still saying subtract I don't know why Telling you, algebra is not a strong suit of everyone. 
height equals 14. It's not cubed or anything. It's just one single limb. So it's just 14. It could be 14 feet, but whatever. All right, so that was straight. For I just feel like if I wouldn't have done that with you, you wouldn't even have tried it. Very unfortunate, yeah. You would you have tried it? Would you have done it without me? Yes. I, I want to do. Let me set up these last two problems. And I'm gonna stop recording. This next one. Shh. This one isn't hard either, but I just want to help you with setup because some of y'all can't see it without it. Uh, you need to find total volume, but you need to decide what uh, shapes you see. What two shapes do you see? No. No. Say the whole thing. No. Trapezoidal prism and what else? Rectangular prism, right? Yeah. You need to find a volume of both of those. <clears throat> so, the rectangular prism, that's not going to be any problem for y'all. Y'all see all the numbers down there that y'all need to use. The trapezoid, you need to make sure you have everything you need. Do you see base one? I see base two. Base two, just move this number up. Base one will be six. Uh, do you have your height for your trapezoid? Uh, nope. That's the slanted side. Nope. The height is going to be right there. That's my altitude. How do I find it? What you said? Yeah, I would subtract from 8 because 8 back here is the same as right here. Oh. <clears throat> there you go. So the height is 14 centimeters. Now you have everything you need. You just need to make sure you use the right height for your... What would the actual height of your trapezoidal prism be? Let's see if y'all know that. No. Uh, the trapezoidal prism, what would the height of that be? 13. Thank you, Mick. I know. When he do his work, he'd be good. Why would it be 13? Trapezoidal prism. Your, your bases are what? Trapezoids. The height is in between the bases. You good? All right. You okay? I got one more I want to set up for y'all before y'all go. Let me set this one. Because if I don't do it now, everybody going to ask me individually, and I don't want individual questions on certain ones. <clears throat> Number two, let me set that one for you, too. <clears throat> Travels oil prism, everybody agree? All right. So you need to make sure you got everything you need for the travels oil. You could have easily just placed that instead of throwing it. <clears throat> Move this 30.6 up to this line right here. Centimeters. Move this 39.4 up to this one. Centimeters. <clears throat> so, I see base one and base two for my trapezoid. What I don't see is my height. My height is missing. This height right here, I don't see it. So I need to find it. To find it, though, on this one, I can't do any subtraction or anything. I gotta do a little bit more work than that. <clears throat> uh, I gotta actually do Pythagorean. But for Pythagorean, I need this little length right here. How would I find this little length from here to here? Good. 39.4 minus 25. So what is that? 14.4. That's this length right here. So that length right there is 14.4. Let me zoom in. <clears throat> that length right there is 14.4. And then from there, now you can do Pythagorean to find your height right here. 30.6 would be your uh, hypotenuse. Just make sure you put the stuff in the right spot. All right, after you find the height, then you can do a uh, volume. And the height of your actual trapezoidal prism 
be here. So the 35. All right, handle your business. I set you up for the win. Thank you. 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 Thank you.